Hello, researchers. Um, you guys may remember back uh, around March 12th to March uh, 13th, we had that spherical uh, formation at the 7 o'clock position on the sun. Um, one of our fellow researchers emailed me uh, this morning and brought it to my attention that it appears we have another one forming. Um, right now I'm in the European Space Agency's Helio Viewer and um, I'm going to go through each filter and I'm going to let it play. Um, it is best seen forming in some filters than others but it is definitely looking like the same sort of structure that we saw back in March. Um, this is the AIA-131 filter and I'm just going to start with this one and go all the way to the bottom of the list. Um, I've got my pointer turned on so you should be able to see that. You see the vortex right there. You can see this uh, plasma, this ejecta um, at the top of this vortex and it seems like it's trying to form a spear. Now when I get into the other filters this will become more apparent, especially right there at the beginning, that cavity, this coronal cavity right here. And uh, as I go through this I'm going to put out a little bit of a wild theory. Um, let's go to the next filter, AIA1600. This isn't going to show it very well. But in elementary and high school and, and college, you know, simple physics were taught about accretion theory, about the formation of the solar system. That the sun um, solar system was created from a cloud of a nebula cloud of dust, uh, dust and gas. And through accretion, um, our star formed, and then the leftover material uh, formed our planets through chance uh, collisions over millennia, over millions of years, billions of years, and uh, smaller things collided into smaller things, becoming larger things, and heats up, and you know, then those bigger objects collide into bigger objects. Well, after seeing this. Uh, after seeing this anomaly, which is showing up a little bit better in this filter, I started rethinking the accretion theory, and it may not be totally correct in my opinion. And I say that for a few reasons. Space, space is enormous, and to form something as perfectly spherical as a planet by random chance coincidence collisions uh, that seems pretty wild to me. I mean, and we know now that there are, you know, planets around almost every star that we find. Every time we go looking for exoplanets, we seem to find one. Um, so here's what I'm going to propose. Uh, that accretion theory may be halfway correct. Um, that things do um, evolve and grow out of the cosmic dust and gas uh, surrounding a star. Um, we know that we're in a local cloud. That's, prob that's most likely not where our star developed. Um, that's where we're at now. Um, we we kind of know about the local cloud environment that we're in now. Uh, let me get to the next filter and then I'll continue. AIA-171. Uh, when I get into the more red colored filters, it'll become a lot more apparent. But then again, uh, once again, here's the vortex. Here's the uh, coronal cavity. But going back to what I was saying. Okay, imagine things being as above, so below, per se. And... Um, I look at this as sort of a seed, sort of a cell dividing. 
Um, what if this structure, just for the sake of argument, and let's, let's just say what if, instead of chance collisions, okay, we know that this uh, anomaly is very highly magnetic. Um, this reminds me of some sort of umbilical cord. Uh, I, I know it's a magnetic uh, vortices that's uh, that has this uh, coronal cavity tethered to the sun the way it is but there's got to be exchange of energy here I would imagine that this thing is feeding off of this vortex um, and if that's forming a spear it would seem to me that that matter would uh, want to uh, and condense to the center of mass, so the center of that little sphere. Um, now, in, back in March, we seen it form, and then there was a flare, and what I call a sun seed, it, it, you know, it blew off with the flare. Uh, what if those could stay very well formed even after they're blown off of the sun's surface? formed well enough that it's sort of a uh, invisible, mag highly magnetic, highly attractive, um, highly charged sphere of uh, hot plasma and uh, with electromagnetic prop uh, properties. That seems to me that it, it, if, it, if it could stay formed as a sphere and if it had enough attraction, it could start collecting uh, dust and gas. And it may do so a lot quicker than we previously thought. So let's say this takes up an orbit around the sun. It would be of low mass. But given enough velocity, um, it may be able to take up an orbital position. If it's attractive enough, um, I would think that it is uh, safe to assume that it would start ac accumulating matter. And that matter would be squeezed into its center of gravity towards the center, forming a core. And my thinking is that over the period of time, um, as it grows more and more complex and uh, gobbles up more and more gas, that it could sometime in the future become a new celestial object. So that's just a twist that I would just like, it's been on my mind, and I wasn't sure how to put it out there, but since it seems like we have a new spear forming, I thought I would just go ahead and throw it out there. Just an idea, uh, something to think about. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the other filters. You can see the outline of the spear a little better here. Um, it seems very turbulent. It's not as well developed as the one we saw back in March. But, you know, we just noticed this today, so that, that may change. Um, in saying that, that this, uh, this, magne this magnetic uh, vortex right here does not seem as tightly wound either. It seems uh, sort of loose and uh, like loose threads. Um, but as this tightens up, it would seem to me that you would uh, start seeing more of a spherical shape. Uh, go to the next filter, AIA211. Uh, you can see the vortex, and you can see the gas swirling around, but you can't see much of the spear. We'll go to the next filter, 304. Yeah, okay, now here into some of these red filters, you're starting to, you can see the dark outline of the vortex better. And you can also see almost a halo of the spear and the gas inside it, inside this cavity. Watch it again. It'll repeat right about now. Right here, you can see the top outline of this cavity. This is not a spaceship, guys. Uh, this appears to be a uh, common occurrence. But it makes you wonder if this could be a twist on planetary body formation. Instead of the old accretion theory where objects simply plow into each other and magically form these 
perfect spheres that we call planets and moons. Next filter, AIA-335. The blue spectrum is not going to reveal a whole lot, although I'll let it play through because the very first few frames seem to show the uh, cavity that uh, show the cavity the most. Right there, you can see it. And you can see that for a while that tether is tightly wound, uh, then it becomes unwound, and when it becomes unwound, you can see that it becomes more turbulent and this thing loses its uh, perfectly spherical shape. Now let's go to the next filter. AIA 4500. There's your coronal cavity. Next filter, AIA 94. Okay, the ejecta inside the cavity is showing up a little bit better in this filter. And you notice that when the vortex is tightly wound and well formed, like it is right here, you can see more of a nice spherical shape. And when it becomes turbulent and unwound, right, right here, that's when you start seeing the, uh, the plasma inside the cavity swirling around. Let's go to the next filter, EIT-171. Uh, the vortex is, uh, I know this is quite dark, but the vortex is very uh, visible right here. As a matter of fact, let me zoom in. Let me adjust this a little bit. We'll probably zoom in once more. There we go. We're pretty, uh, we're really tight in on this thing now. We're not going to see the uh, cavity itself in this filter. Let's go to the next. EIT-195. That is an amazing vortex. Now watch how it becomes unwound here. It was nicely, tightly formed. Now it's turbulent. And then it'll... Looks like it's trying near the end of the frame. Uh, it seems to be trying to take shape at once again. We'll get to the next filter. Uh, let's see. EIT-171. Soho. Again, the vortex is very visible. EIT-195. Soho. EIT-284. Wow. This is the first time I've seen these images, guys. And, uh, now, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think the last one may have been caught by Stereo B. I'm not sure about that. So I don't know if this is the same 7 o'clock position that we saw the last uh, coronal cavity on uh, March 12th. Uh, let's go to EIT-304. You can see a bit of the outline of the cavity. Now that I'm zoomed in, uh, when I get to the bottom, when I get to the end of these filters, I'm going to go back to the top and look at it in red temperature. EIT, uh, well no, this is uh, EUV-171 stereo. A few more filters to go. Stereo EUV195. This one is showing the uh, the, the turbulent uh, plasma inside the coronal cavity very well, but you cannot see the structure of the uh, the spherical uh, geometry of the cavity itself. 
stereo 284. I'd like to know how high that vortex is. And the last filter in Heliot Viewer, stereo 304. Turn the brightness up just a little bit, and we might be able to see the spear. Sharpen it just a little bit. Okay, let's go back up to the uh, some of the first filters. Let's look at red temperature. Um, my source said that uh, EIT 284 was the best filter to view it from. So let's go on down to that. Soho EIT 284. And there's your spear. It's not very well formed yet, but this will be very interesting to watch over the next couple of days. And uh, we'll see how this develops. Um, but I find this exciting, and I hope you do too. And uh, we'll see what becomes of it. Everybody take care.